Hello everyone and welcome back to a new mech video. This is the May release of 2018, the Clan Blood Asp Assault Mech. As you can see here, it's, uh, well, it's it's okay. It's interesting. Good scale there, using the new mech lab. And uh, you'll see the build for the primary configuration in a minute. Um, so, it's obviously one of the Chicken Walker designs. It was made by Star Adder as an insult to Blood Spirit, which uh, are not in the game, sadly. And uh, they uh, basically debuted this as the uh, sort of poster boy for the heavy laser technology. So uh, there you go, a little bit of history there. And uh, yes, it is very high heat. And just to show you, that's what the guns on the shoulders should look like. But we'll jump over to the gameplay now, shall we? So this is also on the new Solaris map, uh, which uh, was actually pretty cool. Uh, from the the bit I saw of it, it looks like it's a pretty fairly large map, but there's a lot going on in it. The most of the buildings have got some form of advertisement flashing on it. They've gone for a very kind of Blade Runner-esque style look. Uh, it fits. It looks quite nice. Um, from my experience of the map, it definitely seems to uh, encourage the verticality. Definitely want to use any of the spots you can get high up, and uh, it's at night time. I think it's always at night time, probably to better show off those building effects. Now PGI did say that they may have some issues performance wise with this new map, although I have to say I didn't really experience any uh, loss of uh, frames or any sudden like dips in performance, all seemed to run pretty well. But maybe I was in an area of the map that wasn't that intensive, so I don't 100% know whether it is or isn't the case. So the build on the Prime is uh, two Gauss rifles, they're its, uh, its main thing, that's what the two large cannons are in the artwork I showed you prior. Uh, and the original game's uh, store page actually shows it with much larger torso guns but they seem to have massively dialed those back which is a real shame because I felt like they were one of the big uh, selling points of it and I yeah, I don't know why the sun spider suddenly backs up into you but I was uh, I was really really happy with this part sorry uh, with the very narrow corridors of, uh, of these buildings it's pretty cool uh, sadly doesn't look like that much of the map is used in that regard it, it kind of opens up a bit more but uh, if those areas exist, I'd love to maybe see them in the future do a proper, full-on, you know, very uh, claustrophobic urban setting. But uh, yes, the build. Uh, dual Gauss rifles, a uh, quad heavy medium laser, two medium pulse lasers, and a single streak SRM-6. So, pretty high heat in the energy side of things, but it also means it's got a crap load of energy hard points. And for uh, clanners out there, that's a good thing. Although they may have recently been nerfed with the recharge time of some of the energy weapons, still doesn't stop them from being particularly powerful. And as a default build, this thing is pretty nasty. The only thing that seems to hold it back is a, a real lack of uh, Gauss ammo. I was surprised how quickly I was running out, especially for a 90 ton assault. Uh, majority of its uh, equipment uh, seems to be taken up by these heavy lasers now. You know, I'm sure people will very quickly find the most optimum setup for these uh, energy hard points. But they're quite generously spread, they're on the arms. Uh, so, one of the things you have to be aware of that I discovered during this fight is your right torso is your most important torso. It's also where your ammo for your SRM is. So, remember to move that or your streak is bloody useless. Because your streak's mounted in your CT, uh, but your ammo ain't. Uh, so if you lose your side torso, you're going to lose your streak SRM6 as well, and uh, a considerable amount of your weapon once your gauss ammo runs out. Um, yeah, you're going to lose about uh, three of your six uh, weapons in one go. It's quite nasty. So yeah, definitely move your SRM ammo out if you're using it. Uh, if not, don't have to worry about that too much. Um, probably if you're messing around with, uh, you know, reorganizing your armor, definitely increase your side torso armor. Uh, hip box wise it didn't feel too bad actually and the uh, mech felt quite balanced I didn't really feel like I was taking damage more to the CT or less uh, like I did with the uh, Fafnir uh, previous month and uh, yeah it seems quite nice uh, so I do apologize it's a very dark map isn't it it's kind of hard to see a bunch of things and uh, that's where you can walk off the walkways uh, but there seems to be this as I said there's this verticality element to the map so you've got these uh, road systems that run up and above and then they sweep down, you probably saw me walk up them before but uh, you've also got the buildings below and I'm not sure how high you can get up on the map with obviously some of the uh, very acrobatic lights, things like spiders but it'd be interesting to see what kind of uh, little nooks and crannies you might be able to get any uh, sniping build up in there and uh, maybe be able to uh, become a right pain in the arse for the other team or for your own team depending on how useless you are as a sniper um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, Blood Ass from the outset. It, it didn't really feel like a mech that was going to be bringing that much unique to the table. And honestly, weapon-wise, hardpoint-wise, it really doesn't. But I did enjoy playing the mech. 
Um, it's not a bad mech if you want a new assault mech. It's uh, it seems like it's definitely got a lot of weaponry for you. Other variants, the A and the B at least come with ECM and uh, a nice mixture of ballistics. Uh, I believe there is also a missile heavy variant that comes with dual LRM20s, and there's another version that's uh, much heavier, focused on ballistics of LB20s and that kind of thing. And then there's uh, I think there's a D Delta version that I think comes with uh, UAC2s and few of a basic uh, backup weapon so yeah they've got the gamut kind of covered here of uh, possible configurations you can use on the blood asp so yeah it's it's not too terrible I'm a bit disappointed honestly with the design where they they scaled back those shoulder cannons because they they were kind of the only unique visual selling point of the mech and uh, to have them dial back it just looks kind of I don't know it's kind of crap it, it kind of reminds me of a really big Uziel when it has that uh, scaling. I'd really like them to bring back the really long Gauss rifle pods, but I don't know. I, I guess the the vocal minority would be the ones who dictated that, sadly. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad mech. It ran fine, and hell, I did all right in this map. But I did. Um, I think it was over 500 damage. And um, yes, he be. No, she doesn't have anything else to add to the video. So that's just a cat being a cow. Um, about 500 damage, and I think I managed to. Uh, get three kills, and uh, I was dropped with Ravagon, so uh, I said hi to him in the match, I don't know if you noticed, but hello Ravagon. Um, maybe see you on the streams. So, yeah, uh, it was uh, it was pretty pretty good. I think we're getting to the end of this match, though, uh, wrapping it up. So, uh, overall, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good assault mech. Uh, lots of hard points, lots of options, it seems like, in the uh, other variants available. And uh, it's nice, a nice little bit of history. It's nice to have the mech that debuted the heavy laser technology um, from a good old star adder. Hopefully, they'll be added to uh, to the game at some point as a faction you'll be able to uh, run around as. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a good week, and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye!